Hello and welcome to another video. The GNOME 41 desktop environment has been let loose on the world and along with it Fedora 35 beta. We're going to take a look at both today. The new Fedora beta release is very handy since it makes a good vehicle for taking GNOME 41 for a test run. To do that, we'll need to install it first, so let's spin up a kernel-based virtual machine, or KVM, I've prepped just for this video. So here we are on the virtual machine, and uh, let's go ahead and start Fedora Workstation Live session from the install media. Okay, got the little spinner. Okay, there's our GNOME 41 desktop. So we can try Fedora or we can install to hard drive. Let's click install to hard drive and hopefully launch the installer. And there it is. We've got English as the language with uh, United States. Continue. Yeah, this is unstable pre-release software. Yes, I want to proceed since we're testing that today. English US keyboard. Los Angeles time zone, looks good. So here we've got uh, the drive selection. I've got a 64 gig virtual drive. Let's see what automatic uh, does. I'm gonna click custom and then do a uh, automatic uh, mount point creation. So this is what it proposes to do. So it has two BTRFS or ButterFS sub-volumes will create the root and home. It'll do a FAT32 boot EFI partition um, and a slash boot EXT4 partition. That looks good. So it's using almost all of the available uh, drive space. So I'll click on done. So it'll create a new GPT partition table. It'll create the boot EFI system partition also, on the third partition, it'll do a BTRFS with two subvolumes, root and home, and a slash boot ext4 partition. All right. So that's pretty much standard as it was back in at least Fedora 34. No changes there. Let's begin installation. So now it's um, doing the partitioning and carrying out the install. All right, it's configuring the installed system, generating the uh, init RAM file system. And it should just about be finished. Okay, some post installation scripts and it's completed. I'm gonna click on finish installation. And we're back to the desktop. So let's go ahead and click on the restart option and restart the system. Okay, it's coming back up again. There's our spinner. Okay, there's our desktop. And welcome to Fedora Linux 35. Let's start the setup. So under privacy, it will leave location services on, but turn off automatic problem reporting. Let's turn on the third party repositories, such as RPM Fusion, etc. Let's click next. So you have the option of connecting your online accounts here. We'll skip that. I'm gonna put in my name for my account name. And I'll give myself a password once and twice to confirm. Click next. And all done. Start using Fedora Linux. Okay, that was pretty painless. Welcome to GNOME 41. So this is our tour. So let's take the tour. Um, yeah, learn about key features in Fedora 35. 
and gnome get no review press the super key so yep that works as before so super key and then type term to search for and launch the terminal that works fine just like gnome 40. Uh, keep on top of workspaces yeah those still work fine okay pretty good next yeah, I don't have a touchpad here on this KVM, but you can use three finger vertical and horizontal swipes to navigate the workspaces and the application expose. That's it. Have a nice day. Close. All right. Let's make this terminal a little bigger. So first thing is, let's see what kernel we're running. So 5.14. And we're using, this is using ZRAM, by the way, for swap, but using about a little over one gibibyte. That's pretty cool. So let's do a snapshot of the system first. So sudo make dir slash dot snapshots. Hit enter. So give a, a root password. Uh, whoops, I'm gonna type that correctly. Let me try that again. Okay, so we created the dot snapshots root directory. So let's create a snapshot of the system. sudo btrfs subvolume snapshot dash r for read only so we can send and receive the btrfs snapshots slash snapshots uh, slash root so we're doing a root complete system and we'll do a root dash dollar date plus percent y percent m percent d to do a timestamp on that or date stamp and there we go we have our first read only snapshot of the system or the root partition root sub volume rather so that's what's in dot snapshots so if you want to send this uh off disk like as a backup you can do sudo btrfs send slash dot snapshots slash root dash whatever date and then pipe it to sudo btrfs receive and some media like a usb thumb drive or some samba directory uh, that will receive your btrfs snapshot so that's how you can do an uh have an offline backup a snapshot backup so that's how you do that let's launch software so you've got welcome to software let's browse software here deja do backups yeah that's a very good backup program I uh, highly recommend. Let's look and see what's installed. Uh, here's our whole bunch of stuff here. Let's click on calendar. So yeah, um, we've got a bunch of screenshots here. Very nice. Uh, got a description of the package. So calendar for GNOME. Installed size. If it's been reviewed enough for safety, desktop only, an age rating if necessary. So it's got 41 RC1 installed, I believe, is what it's saying, and the reviews as well. So yeah, calendar 40.1. Okay. So I think this probably, this version history is a little bit out of date, but there are some updates already, a whole bunch of ones. So from release candidate one to full release, for calendar and a whole bunch of other applications and um, operating system software. So we won't do that today to save time, but uh, yeah, already a bunch of updates available for, for Fedora 35 beta. Let's go to the settings and let's look at the new multitasking uh, page. So under general, we've got hot corner, touch the top left corner to open the activities overview. Okay, I guess that's good for touch screens. Active screen edges, drag windows against the top left or right screen edges to resize them. Okay, let's try that with this window. Yeah, there you go. So I drag it to the top and it automatically maximizes. I drag it back down again and it goes back to standard size. Under workspaces, we have dynamic workspaces and fixed number of workspaces. Okay, multi-monitor. Uh, Setups, that's good, that's relatively new. We've got workspaces on primary display or in all displays. 
Um, we can also configure application switching to include applications from all workspace spaces or from the current workspace only. Okay, very good configuration. Another update is mouse and touchpad. So we have the standard primary button settings under general and mouse speed and natural scrolling switch. But we can also test our settings with this neat little game here. You can test clicking and double clicking and scrolling. You know, um, yeah. It doesn't really add much functionality, but it's kind of a fun, uh, positive little app there. It's pretty nice. So let's launch Calendar. So not too many changes in Calendar. Um, devil's in the details, of course. I mean, you can still do, you know, uh, schedule a lunch meeting. Let's add that. Oh, that's a half hour lunch. Let me edit that. Let's make the location the break room. And let's make the lunch, like say a full hour. Okay. Add a 15 minute reminder. There we go. I click done. And there's our lunch schedule for tomorrow. So under the hamburger menu, we've got the online, online accounts uh, configuration here. So you've got from Google, Microsoft Exchange, Nextcloud, a whole bunch of online accounts you can configure with your calendar. Under managing calendars, we have, we've got two. We've got birthdays and anniversaries and personal. We can add a calendar. We can import a calendar here as well. So calendar name could be imported or whatever name you'd like to give. You can also change the uh, color here. And uh, you can import an iCal. file as well. So either web address or an ICS file. Or you can also uh, add it through the online account settings that we just looked at. Okay, very handy. So iCal is now possible from a file. Let's look at connections. Um, welcome to connections. Learn how connections work. So it's kind of like Remina. So you can use other desktops remotely. Yeah, use the pointer and keyboard too, wow. Connect to different operating systems, so Linux, Mac, and Windows desktops can be accessed through connections, but you need to enable the remote desktops before connecting first, yeah. It's good to know. And yes, we hope you enjoy connections. There's connections, okay. So remote desktop program is included. Under files, we have um, the option to uh, create various formats of compression, compressed documents. So you got zip, uh, password protected zip, .tar .xz, and .7z or 7zip as well. So these are the different formats, very handy to have. Let's create one for documents. And there's documents.zip. And uh, you can extract here, let's move it to trash. Okay, and you can undo it and it puts it back again. All right. Pretty standard stuff, but uh, GNOME 41 makes this uh, a little easier. I also got a text editor. It's very simple and yet fairly functional complete, fu functionally complete, I think. Um, got different views here. Under tools, you got spell check, language, highlight misspelled words, etc. Under preferences, you can display line numbers, you can uh, write margin at column 80, you can configure tab stops, automatic indentation, autosave, uh, font and colors, you can have different uh, uh, color schemes you can choose a few of them. You can add your own as well. You can also change the standard font. Also, you got a few plugins available. 
for the built-in editor, a Python console, etc. You can also display the overview map, which is very handy. So you get a little map there for your document. Pretty cool. Yeah. Nice, useful editor, I think, if you, not, if you don't need too much. So under power, we've got balanced and power saver. And also the power settings. So this is a KVM, so this is of minimal use, but uh, yeah, it could be useful for uh, bare metal. And the usual power saving options. So we have about, so we can change the device name here. Uh, yeah, we've got Fedora 35 beta, GNOME version 41 release candidate. This is a Wayland session windowing system. Yeah, pretty cool. From my point of view, Fedora 35 is already shaping up to be a great release coming hopefully next month. We could spend a lot more time talking about all the little improvements that are already in the beta, and I'll be looking into doing just that when the final release becomes available. With version 41, GNOME continues along its current trajectory with distraction-free desktop computing paradigm and modest updates. If you made it this far, thanks so much for watching. Please leave a comment below, and if this video was useful to you, please also leave a like and consider subscribing to support more of these. Until next time, take care.